Three, two, one. Welcome to Antimatters. Hello everyone. A special video today with all my ants in. An ant room tour. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. I got a new shelf and have managed to compress them all down. More an ant shelf tour. I'm really happy with it though. I'll also cover the huge announcement from the end of the last video, don't worry. <laughs> if you haven't watched the last video and heard the announcement, it's probably time to do it now. You got a minute. So let's start on the top shelf. The Tetramorium get the peak spot on the shelf. This is simply because they're the best colony to watch. And with my future plans, I intend to cover the entire top in nest. Then I'll move down a shelf. Or start stacking nests. As the not fussy ant, they honestly don't care where they are. I'm enjoying their new spot though. Enough for the both of us. For the top tier lighting, I have a USB powered light. It clips on and off, so it can be used on any of the other tiers as well. I really like this thing, I got it from Lidl. Sharing the heat mat for a nice boost to their growth, we have the Friendly Flabbers. Their relaxed way of going about their business is one of my favourite things to watch. Always left feeling calm and relaxed. I'm hoping they will have a mild boom this year, but as long as they're healthy and happy, I don't mind what they get up to. They're such pretty little ants though. Alongside them is my ridiculously brood boosted Lassius Niger colony. Hoping for some action from these this year. They got a ridiculous amount of brood though. I'm not the greatest fan of brood boosting and haven't touched it for donkey's years. I was experimenting with merging colonies in the founding stage after queens had passed away though leaving brood and workers. If you remove a dead queen and leave the workers and brood for five plus days, they will be accepted by a foster colony. This only applies to Lassius Niger. They should get up to something though in 2022 and I'll likely come clean on all my experiments that I've been doing to them in maybe the next video. The mental monsters, known as the Fidole Paladula, also inhabit the top shelf, only because their lid is fiddly though. They will move next to the fish tank soon, in the Rubra's winter spot. They're completely nuts and I'm trying to bring the numbers down at the moment. They can get through two giant roaches a day and that's what I was feeding them for a little while. Now though, they're on one medium dubia roach or morio worm a day. Hopefully they chill out a little bit soon. They're also still flying like crazy and being a general nuisance to be honest. I'm turning over the whole tank daily, making it look like a mess. Oh. Anyway, down to the middle tier. I'll disturb the messes, but I annoyed the other founders last night to check them, so I won't again, but I remember what I saw. <laughs> so the larger messes are smashing out the brood now and have enough seeds to last quite a while. They're doing okay in this nest and it actually suits them quite well. The only downside is the small outworld. Although this makes for interesting feeding. They love their protein and go nuts for fruit flies at the moment, but will accept pretty much any protein. The colony next door is the same. They need some more seeds as they're rapidly devouring the current stash, so let's give them some seeds now and come back to them in a moment. In front of them is the new Cruentatus girls. You may have noticed the change of nest. Well. Had a lot get the old funky leg syndrome and die. Well, three of them. Mostly, I think, because of the stress of travelling. 
The sugar water was okay though, I know that, so it isn't ethanol poisoning. They are a formic acid producing ant though, and it's very easy for them to get stressed and drench the nest with acid. In a non-porous setup, like the other nest, the acid has nowhere to go and builds up to toxic levels. So I decided this AAC nest was a lot more suitable in this situation. The acid won't build up, I hope, and the ventilation is unbeatable. The only downside, the internal holes are very tight for the fatter members. I'm hoping they'll chew them out though, to be honest. The material is well within their range of chewable. So on to the next ant. The single Campanotus Herculanus queen. She has two larvae now and maybe 10 eggs, I'd say. Things are looking good for her, to be honest. She's fully claustral and doesn't need feeding during founding. However, I have been. I'm going to leave her be though for a while now and only add water so as not to disturb her. I've been giving her plenty of protein though and sugar and I think she's well stocked up now. Next to them in the mini Venus, we have the Campanotus Harry Barry. So she had one larvae, but that's been eaten and now three eggs are standing in its place. That's okay, she was quite stressed after transport. I opened her tube to the outworld last night and left some treats if she wanted them. Really looking forward to a time I can look at this queen, but for now, it's do not disturb. The secret colony had five workers as well. That's two now, but there are three pupae in the pipeline and plenty of other brood. I'm not going to tell anyone what they are yet. So round the corner, the Polyrachus Illudata Queen. She pops out every now and again and has two fat cocoons in her tube. It won't be long till the first workers arrive and I'm so excited. She's been a real dream so far and been really surprisingly easy to keep. I think a lot of that is due to the raised founding. I shall be founding more uh, Polyrachus Illudata Queens in Saturn nests at some point, in controlled conditions to fully flesh out my theory. But imagine being scared of heights and then made to live at the top of a skyscraper. It would create massive amounts of stress. And now flip that the other way around so you're scared to be on land and you're stuck in a one story bungalow. I don't think these poor ants really like the floor at all. So onto the final ants on the new shelf, the Yeans. In their new Saturn, things are looking really good and they're heading in a positive direction. The brood pile is increasing and it turns out I think they're also nocturnal, maybe. I keep catching loads of them doing stuff at night after the lights are off. I've been feeding them lots of protein though and it's all looking good at the moment. The bottom shelf is my feeders and is boring. Check these out though. So three of the most beautiful nests in the world, sitting vacant at the moment. It's a bit of a tragedy to be honest. So I got a new gen free the other day, which came with my leaf cutter pod as a gift from Wakushi. I really appreciate your lovely gifts, man. They're the best. This Gen 3 Large with cork has the cork flooring and is an ideal nest for one of my Campanotus colonies. As I was saying with my Cruentatus, they struggle in non-porous material, but the cork combined with the gypsum creates an ideal nest where any acid is absorbed and slowly released at a non-toxic level or broken down. Apart from being available in cork, there's also an acrylic floored version. They're both stunning in the looks department though. I'm thinking of adding the acrylic nest into the tetramorium nest, as I have some plans to spread them over different shelves when they're large enough by using the third gen nests, connectors and pipes. It's a long way off, 
but testing it now wouldn't hurt and I believe the Gen 3 large with acrylic floor would make a great tetramorium nest. I'll happily test it out so someone else doesn't have to guess too. Alongside those beautiful nests is my leaf cutter pod, also from Wakushi. If you didn't guess, I like Wakushi's shop a lot. It's got great value, design, quality and consistency. So the pod's currently empty, but if you listen to the end of the last video, thank you if you did by the way, you'll know I bought some leaf cutters to go inside. I've gone for Atta Mexicana from Antantix. I chose them because I like the look of Ant Oliver's colony and I have spent far too much time watching Antantix live stream of them. Their queens are huge. Originally was going to choose Acro Mermex because the millions of workers Atta's produced is very intimidating. But after speaking to Atta keepers, they assured me colony size is manageable by controlling the food intake. They will only go crazy if you go crazy with leaves. Leaf cutters are a massive purchase anyway, so I chose Antantix to get them. There are a couple of other shops with them, but on such a special ant, I think you have to be able to fully trust the shop you buy from. Antantix is well known for giving a great ant experience though, so I can't wait. Also, for added peace of mind, they have collection in person. I'm super excited about the Atters, but the catch, well, I'm going to Ancon in May, <laughs> and I'm going to collect them then to guarantee safe passage home. It means a couple months wait, but that's okay with me, and gives the leaves outside some time to grow before I start ripping them off. I'd like to have everything ready for them to go for when they arrive. Ancon's going to be so friggin' epic though. Apart from Atters, my former Kafuspga colony will be coming soon as they've awoken from hibernation and the big tank is also waking up, both in terms of fauna and flora. They got some predatory mites to kill off any unwanted pests in there as well. Hopefully next time I see Queen of Queens she has no mites. And before you go, check out the smaller messes, they've come out to grab all the seeds. There's quite a few of them. They love their seeds. I hope you enjoyed this video though. Have a fab day. I'll see you next time. Bye.